We've been looking at slope a lot these last few classes and defining slope in different ways. Now it's time for us to apply it a little bit. So what does slope mean if we actually put it into context, if we actually put it into some real world situations? And that's what this last unit is going to be all about for us. So before we get to that first example, there's a couple definitions I want us to write first. The first one, it says we want to write the definition of what a linear relationship is and constant rate of change. Rate of change, guys, that was our very first lesson of this unit. We found some rates of change. So let's take a look at defining those things. All right, so let's look at, oh, now it's going to switch on me. Relationship. Your packet looks just like mine. We should have linear relationship written on the first line. Now, if we have a linear relationship, you end up with a straight line graph. So if you have a linear relationship, you have a straight line graph. Think about when we were finding our slopes. We found slope from a graph. It was a straight line graph. When we were finding slope from a graph, it was a straight line graph. That's a linear relationship. Straight line graph. Now, how could you remember that? Let me show you the little trick I do. Take a look at the first part of the word linear. What do you see? Line. A linear relationship, the first part of the word is line. And we get a straight line graph. So line and line. They match up for us. The other word we want to go ahead and define, or phrase I should say, constant rate of change. These are going to be our two main ideas today throughout the lesson. So I just want to start off by defining them, and then we're going to put them into action as we go here. So a constant rate of change. Our very first lesson of this unit, we found rates of change. We found rates of change and unit rates and things like that. What does it mean for something to be constant? If I'm driving at a constant speed, what does that mean? Same. It means the same. It means it's not going to change, right? It's going to stay the same. So we know that constant means it's going to stay the same. So our change Change between any two points is the same. So if I have a graph and I find the change between any two points, it's going to be the same. Or if I have a table, if I have a table, we found some change, some rates of change, some slopes from tables. If I have a table, the change between any two points on my table is going to be the same. That's what constant means. We've been looking at unit rates and rates of change. Now this one is just going to be constant, which means it's going to stay the same. All right, so Let's take a look at our first example. Remember, we want to take our stuff we've been working on with our slopes and things, and we're going to put it into context, a.k.a. apply it, a.k.a. real-world stuff. All right, so we have... Marcus can download two songs from the Internet each minute. This is shown in the table below. It says, compare the change in the number of songs, Y, to the change in time, X. What is the rate of change? So in order for us to do this, we want to find, it says, the change in the number of songs, y. 
So if I look at the change, this is just like what we did when we were finding slope from a table. We've got a table. Let's find our change. To get from 0 to 2, what happens? Plus 2. How about to get from 2 to 4? Plus 2. 4 to 6. 6 to 8. Plus 2. So what's the change in the number of songs? 2. So change in songs is our y, and that was 2. Change in songs is our y, and we just found that to be 2. It says we need to compare it to the change in the time. Okay, time is my x. To get from 0 to 1, plus 1. 1 to 2, plus 1. 2 to 3, plus 1. 3 to 4, plus 1. So change in time or minutes, which is our x, is 1. Change in y over change in x. The only difference is we've got labels on it. We're applying it. It's called putting it into context. Change in Y over change in X, that should sound super familiar to us. So it equals, what's going to happen? We're going to have rate of change, two songs per one minute. I'm not doing anything different. Instead of us using the word slope, what phrase are we using instead? Yeah, rate of change. We just found the slope from that table. Rate of change is none other than our slope. We just have some labels with it now. Instead of just a table with x and y, our x is the number of minutes, our y is the number of songs. I didn't change anything we've done the last few classes with slope. It's just also referred to as your rate of change. Change in y over change in x. Now y just happens to be the number of songs and x happens to be the number of minutes. That's from a table. Now we want to go ahead and look at it from a graph. So go ahead and take a minute and graph the ordered pairs from your table. So you've got X is 0, Y is 0. Let me just get you rolling with the first couple here. I know we're more used to kind of that vertical table piece, but tables can also go horizontal, which is that left to right like we see here. And then our next ordered pair, the X is 1, the Y is 2. X is 1, Y is 2. So finish off plotting those ordered pairs on your graph. Remember, that top row is your X. The bottom row is your y. So go ahead and finish plotting those ordered pairs. I've got 0, 0 already, and then we've got 1, 2. So go ahead and finish plotting those. Go ahead and finish plotting those. If you're not sure how I'm creating those ordered pairs from the table, let me know. Like I said, I know we're a little bit more used to the vertical table than we are the horizontal table. So it's a little bit different look for us. The lines are a little tough to see on the handout, guys. Sorry, those did not copy the darkest. They're there. They're just a little tough to see. And then part of this also, too, we want to label the axes. So we want to label the x and y axis with what they represent. So we've graphed ordered pairs before. We've looked at graphs of lines before. But we haven't labeled it. We haven't put it into context. So the x-axis, what am I going to label the x as? What does the x represent? Sam, what does the x represent? Time in minutes. Time in minutes, yep. 
So I'm going to put time. And I'm going to put minutes. Because that's what X represents. What does the Y represent? What's our other piece? Go ahead, Sam. Songs. Songs. So number of songs. Number of songs. If you can't fit in that little box that's there, that's okay. I can't fit it in there either. Number of songs is kind of a longer label. So what do we notice? It asks us to describe the pattern of the graph. What do we notice about those points? What's the pattern? What have we created? What do we think? Sam, what do you think? What does it look like? I think it's something It is going rising up. You're right. Positive what? Positive what? What have we been working with? It is positive. What's that S word? Slope. Slope. All right. So I heard somebody say linear, which again means we've got a straight line. And somebody else also said positive, and then we kind of filled in that we've got positive slope. So it's going in that upward direction, and the points do make a straight line. The points do make a straight line. We've got our positive slope. And the other piece for us to look at, talking about positive slope, if I start at 0, 0, and I want to go to my next point, take a look. We're going up 2, and we go right 1. Our slope up 2, right 1, 2 over 1. Y is songs, X is minutes. Up 2, right 1. Table, graph, our rate of change is the same. Doesn't matter which thing we're looking at. Doesn't matter which thing. So what we're looking at today, it's not a big jump forward for us, guys. It's not. We just have a, now a new phrase for our slope. It's our rate of change. So change in Y over change in X, it's our rate of change. We've got some labels to throw on there, but we're not finding it any different. We're not finding it any different at all. So let's take a flip to the back side of this first page. Let's take a flip to the back side of this first page. Up at the top, this piece is already filled in for you. Relationships that have straight line graphs are called linear relationships. We already talked about that piece. We already defined that. But I wanted us to hear it again. We're seeing it again. Straight line graphs, linear relationships. Remember, we talked about the first part of the word linear being line. Whoops. First part of the word linear is being line. As the number of songs increases by two, the time in minutes increases by one. So we've got two songs per every one minute. The rate of change between any two points in a linear relationship is the same or constant. So a linear relationship has a constant rate of change. So no matter where we went on that graph, no matter where we went on that table, it was two songs for every one minute. So let's try this out for us. Let's take a look at example one. The balance in an account after several transactions is shown. Is the relationship between the balance and the number of transactions linear? So for it to be linear, I know we don't have it graphed and we don't have to. 
We don't have to graph it. We just need to see, is our rate of change constant? So let's look at number of transactions is X, and the balance is your Y. I know it's not labeled on this one, so go ahead and label that at the top of your columns in example one. Number of transactions is X. Number of, or excuse me, your balance is Y. Number of transactions is X and your balance is Y. So let's see if our rate of change is constant. And remember, rate of change, guys, same as my asking you, find your slope. Rate of change is the same as my asking you, find your slope. So we need the change in Y. Let's check it out. 170 to 140 minus 30. 140 to 110 minus 30. 110 to 80 minus 30. So our change in Y, looking good, it's constant. How about the X's though? 3 to 6 plus 3. 6 to 9. 9 to 12 plus 3. So would we say we have a linear relationship? Yes. Our change, our rate of change is constant. So do we have a linear relationship? Yes. Yes. Linear. Yes. And we're going to abbreviate, guys. Constant rate of change. Let's go C-R-O-C. -C. Let's call it a crack. Constant rate of change. That gets to be a lot to write out. Crack. crack. All right, so our crock, change in Y over change in X. Change in Y over change in X. But remember, we need to take it that one step further. We need to label. The negative 30, what's my label for that? What's the label for it? What does it represent? It's your balance, so it's dollars. What's the three represent? The three represents transactions. Let's simplify a little bit. Negative 30 over 3 can simplify. We get negative 10 dollars for every one transaction. If I have negative $10, what does that mean is happening every transaction? Are we gaining money? Are we putting it in and saving? Or are we taking money out? Taking money out. We're taking money out. So we are taking out $10 every transaction. So this, like I said earlier, it's just kind of that next step for us. We've done a lot with slope. Finding that rate of change, you guys, based on our practice and our quizzes, we can all find that rate of change. I don't doubt you one bit. Now it's just that next step of, can I apply it? Do I understand what X and Y are representing? What does my slope, AKA my rate of change mean? That's what we're working towards today. It's the only difference. So let's take a look at these last two here together. Then we'll take a little break. We'll come back and we'll do some work in our groups. Okay. So let's look at these two. What I want you to do, what I want you to do, let's just look at letter A. I want you to tell me, looking at letter A, is the relationship linear? No. If it's not, tell me why it's not. If you think it is, find the constant rate of change. So just do letter A. Take a look at it. What do you think? Is the relationship linear? If you don't think it is, a couple of you have said no. If you don't think it is, just write just a little blurb why you don't think it is. If you think it is, find our constant rate of change like we did in example one. What do you think? 
Yes or no from A? Yep, so is it linear? So is it linear? Again, I have a lot of you say no, no. If you don't think it is, why isn't it? Or at least have it in your brain how you knew it wasn't. If you think it is, find the constant rate of change like we did in number one. Now, I've heard a lot of you when I just asked the question, or Mr. Andrews asked the question, is it linear? And a lot of you right away are saying no. How do we know it's not linear? I heard a lot of no's. Caden, how do we know? What's not the same? All right, so they're not going up by the same amount, Colin? They're not constant, yeah. Let's take a look at what that means, though. Let's take a look at what that means. We go down five. We go down four, and we go down four. Then on the x's, up five, up five, up five. So are the x's okay? Yeah, but the y's, not so much. So linear, no. No crack. So that's why it's not linear. We don't have a constant rate of change. Now the graph one, we really didn't look at one like that yet. Yeah. For a graph to be linear, how can we tell by looking at a graph if it's linear? How do I know, Caden? Straight line, right? Well, these look like a straight line, but let's be sure. Let's find the slope. I'm going to start at that top point. I'm going to go down to right to. I'm going to go down to. I'm going to go right to. Is that constant? Yes. Down to, right to? Down to, right to? Linear? Yes. We have a straight line. We have a straight line. We could say we have a constant slope, if you'd like, or a crack. So if you have a graph, the reason why I want to do a graph one is to make sure is to make sure you check your slope. Don't just look at the graph and say, yeah, that looks like a straight line. But now here's the challenge, and then we get to take our break. Here's our challenge with the graph. I still want to find I still want to find my constant rate of change. Here's where we have to be really careful with the graph. Everything we've looked at so far with graphs, our scale went by ones. Here's the tricky part with the graphs. My scale in this one, the scale isn't ones. So when I talked about going down two boxes, how far did I really go? I went two boxes, but how much? Two box drop, though. I went from sixty to eight, uh, from eighty to sixty. I didn't go two. How many did I go? Twenty. I went twenty. So we went down twenty, which, like Sam just said, is a negative twenty. If it goes down, we need a negative. You're right. So that's where we have to be careful with the graphs. Each box isn't always necessarily one. Now, I went to the right, too. I went from 8 
to 16 though. I really went to the right, eight. So I've got negative 20 over eight. And let's see, the 20 is time or minutes. And the X, the eight is volunteers. If we go ahead and find that This would be, if we put it just as our rate, this would be negative two and a half minutes per volunteer. So as the negative piece, remember that's when things are going down. So as our time decreases by two and a half minutes, as our time decreases by two and a half minutes, we gain a volunteer. So as the amount of time needed decreases, we have more volunteers. All right, so what I want us to do, we're gonna go ahead and take a little break. We'll come back, do a couple together in our groups and give you guys some time to practice. All right, let's take a look at question number one. Now, if you feel like you're ready to kind of try it yourself, go ahead and work ahead of me. If you feel like you're still kind of at a place, you're like, oh, Miss Kyle, I need you to walk me through it. That's okay. So go ahead, if you want to kind of try it yourself, you can, or if you want to stick with me, you can stick with me. The amount of paint Y needed to paint a certain amount of chairs X is shown in the table. Is the relationship between the two quantities linear? If so, find the constant rate of change. If not, explain your reasoning. So if we've got our table, if we've got our table, remember we need to look at change in Y and we need to look at the change in our X. The change in y looks like plus 6 each time. The change in x is a plus 5. So are we constant? Yes. Yes. We are constant. So what does that mean? Linear relationship or not? Yes. Yes. Constant rate of change. Yeah. We've got a linear relationship. So linear, yes. Now, our constant rate of change, constant rate of change, change in y, change in y, and what does the six represent? Paint. Paint. Cans of paint. Change in x is five. And five for chairs, you're right. Six cans of paint, five chairs. Now, knowing I need six cans of paint for five chairs, that's not always super helpful. So let's go ahead and find that nice unit rate like we did in our very first unit. So remember, to find our unit rate, we take the top divided by the bottom. So the number of cans of paint divided by how many chairs. We end up with needing 1.2 cans per chair. Won't you not simplify it like that? Because it's but we want to find our rate of change. If I ask you, if I ask you for just slope, if I ask you for just slope, I want six over five. Absolutely, that's a great point to bring up. If I ask you for just slope, we want six over five. If I want the rate of change though, to me it's more helpful to know how many cans of paint I need for one chair versus how many I need for five. So knowing how many cans I need per one chair is super helpful. Let's stop the tapping please.
All right, let's take a look at question two. The reason why I want to do question two together is because I know if we look at the graph, some of you are going to think, oh, yeah, that looks linear, and others are going to be like, no, Miss Scott, it looks like there's a point missing. We have the altitude. Please stop tapping. I'm done asking. The altitude y of a certain plane after a certain number of minutes x is shown in the graph. Is the relationship linear? Now, you might look at that and think, well, it looks like there's a point missing. Doesn't mean it's not necessarily linear. Let's check out our slope. Now, this is a little bit different for us. My first point is halfway on a box. My first point is halfway on a box. So if to get from the first point to the second point, all right, so if I want to get from that point on the far left to that next point, this is a little different for us. I'm going down half of a box, and then I go to the right too. Now, let's just continue that pattern though and see if we can get to that next point. If I go down half of a box and to the right two, I know that's not a point on our graph, but I'm gonna see if I can keep that same slope pattern and get to that far right point. So I went down half of a box and right two. Down half of a box, right two. Down half of a box, right two. Do I land on that next point? Yes. Yes. So again, we went, we started at that far left point. We went down half of a box, right two. Down half of a box, right two. Down half of a box, right two. Do we have a straight line? Yeah, our slope's constant, right? Yeah, so linear equals yes. Now that constant rate of change, the graphs are always a little tougher than the tables because that scale is different. So when I went down half of a box, take a look at our scale. How much is half of a box worth? Let's see, a whole box is worth how much? How much, Sam? I guess 1,000 dollars. Yeah, 1,000 feet is a whole box, so half of a box is 500, right? Now we went down, so I went down 500. And then I went to the right, I went to the right two boxes. Is that worth two? What do you think? If I go to the right one, two, it's just two, right? We went right two. So down 500, right two. So down 500, right two. All right, let's throw some labels on before we simplify that down into that nice unit rate that we like. The negative 500, is that our feet or our minutes? Feet. feet. And then the two would have to be our minutes. If we do our division, we have negative 500 divided by two. We get negative 250 feet per minute. What does the negative tell us? What's happening? Going down. Going down. We're losing altitude, AKA going down. So really remember today, it's just kind of that next step up for us. Finding slope from a table hasn't changed. Finding slope from a graph hasn't changed. We just have to put some labels on it. And we have to be careful, though, when we label. Go back to your table, what's x and what's y? Go back to your graph, what's x and what's y? Now, I told you, if we got through three examples, we could be 
done for the day. So these are the first two. These are the first two. There's just one more. I told you three. And we're going to be done a little early. So if you go to that next sheet, I just want to do one more together. And you're going to see why I want to do it together. So when we come back in tomorrow, the rest of the practice, we should be able to handle. We should have seen every different type of example we can. So let's just look at number one together, and we can call it a day. Determine whether the relationship is linear. If so, find the constant rate of change. Now, if you look at number one, let's go ahead and do our changes here. What do we got? Plus 9, plus 12. Non-linear. Now, be careful. Right now, it's not looking linear, is it? We got a 9, we've got a 12, we've got a 36. It actually is linear. Divided by 9, all of But let's go to the x's. Let's go to the x's. Plus three, plus four, plus 12. Now what it looks like, and this is why I want to do this one together, it looks like we're not linear. But it is because, watch this. I'm gonna do my crock. Watch what happens. If I put nine, over 3, because that's my x and my y. It's my y over x, 9 over 3, is the same thing as 12 over 4, is the same thing as 36 over 12. Yeah, they all simplify down to 3. So you have to make sure, I wanted to make sure we saw one like this, that the change you see in the table, it might not look constant until you actually put it in that fraction piece for that rate of change. So make sure if you think you don't have a constant rate of change, refer to this example because we sure do. The three is cents. The one is ours. So three cents per hour. So just be very careful. Just because the rate of change doesn't look constant, at first glance, make sure you check the y over x.